This is the beginning of my project. It's the Horton 3000. As you can see, I've already put together some of the parts. First thing I did was opened up the box, of course. I'm not going to show you unboxing. And I labeled, or numbered rather, each of the parts according to the drawings. W6-2 and then again W6-1. This represents one part. Once I had this figured out, I started with W1-2 and W1-1, which is the largest part. Something I'm doing, this, I'm presuming, I don't know, but I'm presuming for a carbon fiber rod of a certain size. It just so happens that I have two five foot titanium thin walled tubes. So I made a little tool and I'll show you that in a minute that enlarges this hole to accommodate my titanium tube. You may you can use it for a larger rod as well. I would actually recommend a larger rod than this. This seems very small. I guess again you can determine by your thickness of the rod sorry, the tube, as to the strength. But in my case, I had the tubes, the titanium tubes, and I machined this out for those three-quarter inch tubes. Now, I'm going to begin assembling. As you can see, on my bench, this represents the body of the model. Once again, the largest one, would actually sit about there. So it gives you an idea of what you're going to be up against. You're going to build the body and uh, then begin assembly. So on mine, I'm going to modify it a fair bit. In any case, I am now started. I have eight bins, eight bins of pieces. Each bin represents one of the sheets that came in the box. No directions, by the way, as in the word directions. No, only a set of drawings. And uh, they're pretty good. I'm learning how to use just the drawings. And uh, anyway, we'll see if just the drawings work when this is all finished. The process I'm using, I'm going to cover this with a combination of fiberglass material. This one here is a one ounce material. This will cover most of the body and for end wings. Areas that are going to be reinforced are going to be covered with a four ounce material. But they won't cover the entire area. They'll just cover, for instance, the nose area. Maybe an area from, say, from about here to around to here. Okay? Don't need to cover all of this or all of this area here, this is not likely to get damaged. And I'm, when I say damage, I mean transportation damage. I don't mean <laughs> crash damage. For some reason, not much protects it from crash damage. Anyway, this covering, I don't use epoxy. I haven't used it in years, actually. I've been using this. It's a, I, I don't know how I ever came across it in the first place, but I, knew, I read something or I heard something to try this in place of epoxy coating. Still using the same fiberglass, of course. It's a product made by Minwax, and it's called Polycrylic. The nice thing about it is it seems to provide all of the things that the epoxy does, strength, bonding, and so on, but it's water-based, and it's one part. I also discovered the best way to put it on is with a brush, not with a roller. With a roller you get a more textured surface. This stuff is unbelievable, considering that it's water-based. I clean up with water. 
Wash my hands with water, wash my brushes with water. No acetone, no lacquer thinners. Something else it does too. And I tested it and over the years it's really stood up. And other people have tested it. I've noticed a test done on YouTube recently. But if you take a look at it, let's see if I can show this better here. You can see that it's actually peeling foam off with the fiberglass. In other words, this is not letting go. This is holding on. And it's got a very nice finish to it. It's a, a little bit textured, but uh, basically smooth. It's not that glass finish anyway, I, unless that's what you want. And then there's other processes I've used, which will give you the glass smooth finish. This was the most important part, this part right here. Now, something I discovered because of this, it's a fantastic adhesive. I'm going to pull these pins out. Let me see if I can show you this. Now, there we are. There's my chrome. See how fine that line is? This Minwax stuff, it's like, uh, I guess I can best describe it as like milk. Okay, so it gives you a very fine line. No sanding really required. Now, let me show you. It's not breaking. It's not letting go. It's going to rip the glass. The foam. You can see it ripping the foam now. Look at that. It's actually ripping the foam. As you can see. Now that's a really good adhesive. Well, <laughs> let's put it this way. It makes a good adhesive. I sanded it first, just enough to break the surface. Let me show you. I believe in that you do have to sand this surface. You have to take that little bit of gloss off. And that's all it takes to take it off. It's gone. I can just take that in anyway, and like that. And I sanded this piece too, right there. Then I simply took a paintbrush, put a little bit on this side here, a little moundy, put this down on it stuck in the pins. See, it's a fantastic product. I'm only saying it's a fantastic product. It's great for our purposes. And uh, the factory cleanup of water makes it one of the best things I could think of. In any case, that's that. I'm using this Gorilla Wood A lot of people use it. This one happens to be um, where is it here? Indoor outdoor use, type two water resistance adhesive. For this gluing, I'm going to use the Gorilla Glue. The reason being, the um, other glue that I'm using, the polycrylic, it's like I said, it's like milk, and it's a little bit too thin. And if I put it on here, I have to hold everything vertical, or it simply runs off. Um, that's where the, the advantage of the Gorilla glue comes in. It's thick, it stays in one spot, much easier to work with. With this project, something I'm doing, this hole is too small for what I want to do. I presume this is meant for a carbon fiber rod. And even if it wasn't, I'm going to put a rod through it. However, the one I'm going to use is a thin wall titanium. Sorry, I said rod, I meant tube. This is a thin wall titanium tube. I have a few lengths of it actually. 
from another project. It's lightweight, very lightweight, and super strong. And I'm using it because I have it, as opposed to uh, for any other reason. But as you can see, it's half inch hole compared to three quarter. So, I made up a little device. Here's how it works. See, it has a step in it and a plug. This plug fits nicely in there. So you're left with this gap, okay? Nice, nice gap. So what I do, so I take this donut I've made, which has many holes drilled in it. It fits in there like that. Then this fits in there like that. Oh, there we are. As you can see, the holes. I push little pins in those holes, and that holds that donut in place. So, here's what I'm going to do. Got the donut in place. I push in the pins into the foam. You don't need a lot. Three pins is enough. So far it has been for me. And one more. And then you can take that out. In my case I have to be sure that the pins are recessed below the surface of the donut. And there's what you've got. Okay. You see that? So now An old laminate trimmer. I never had much use for it till now. And you can see that it has a guide in it. Let's see if I can make the macro come out. There we are. There's the guide, you can see that. And the laminate trimmer. And it's the depth. It's the depth of the uh, foam. Drop it down inside there. And just set it on top of a piece of plywood so it won't damage my, my working surface. Put it down in there. Sit this down in here. Turn it on. rod now has a nice snug fit through the new hole. Let's trim off a little bit of flash in the bottom here and there we are. Remove the donut, pull out the pins and then you can just simply slide the rod. Snug fit right through. And this will go through the entire wing. This, not this one, but the longer one. This will be the reinforcing for the wing. And there it is. You can see that's where to line up. This will come through to the inside. And if I can find another rod, yep, there's another piece there. This one will also be in there. Jump around here. This one also. Be in there. So that will be my connection to my body. 